Hey pals, we believe in the value for value model. If you receive value from your goal with the heat crew, we encourage you to give a little value back. Check us out on patreon.com slash goal with the heat to find out more. Hello and welcome to Goal with the Heat. I'm Dominic. And I'm John. I'm Melissa. And this is your cultural guide to the phenomenon that was Miami Vice. This week we're talking about season five, episode nine, titled Fruit of the Poison Tree. This is one of my more one of my favorite episode names. This has a great name. I don't know what it how what it has to do with the episode though. I'm confused on the symbolism. I, I guess here. it has some some legalese type thing. <laughs> May, oh, that's I, true. I guess that's what it. Yeah. They say it at the end of the episode. Gotcha. And it actually is in the business type phrase where if you get information on someone an ill gotten way. Yeah. And, I mean, I wouldn't have known that had I not looked at like the show notes. So I'm not claiming to be all smart here with the legal stuff. <laughs> it originally premiered on February 3rd, 1989. It is written by Rob Reagan, who's got one more episode coming, but he's a nobody. And it's directed <laughs> by Michelle Manning, who's got one more coming, but she's a nobody too. So <laughs> We're not going to talk about them. <laughs> you hear that, Michelle? Nobody. <laughs> I do like to point out when we do have a female director because they happen so infrequently that this is probably only like the fourth time that that's happened. What's up with that, Miami Vice, huh? <laughs> we're looking at you, Michael Mann. <laughs> yeah, so, we're looking at you. Before I get started, could check in to share each other's lives. I also just want to have a quick reminder that we have been on this bi weekly publishing schedule since Melissa and I have welcomed our fourth bundle of joy into the house. And I'm saying because we've welcomed as in we've recorded this in the future. <laughs> so we have re-recorded episodes. These are on a bi-weekly schedule while we get adjusted to new baby in the house. We will be back to our live weekly hot takes on what's trending in the news before we get started w- with an episode. But we're still on our bi-weekly schedule. This is probably close to one of the last ones that we'll have on the bi-weekly. And we'll switch back over to week. All right, John. Last week. We had a time where we had a couple artists that we had kind of heard from before. I hope that's not going to be a trend, is it? Oh, so you're a trend. Almost like this would be another music repeat, like last week was kind of a repeat (laughs) because we had already talked about them. Uh, I I, I don't know. Have we talked about YouTube or Robert Plant before? Uh, I mean, those things Uh, sound familiar. Maybe, uh, I don't know, like three times each? Yeah, yeah. So uh, I I guess uh, let's try and talk about them again. Yeah, our our music was Desire by U2. U2, who also appeared in our music segment from the episodes Lombard, Lombard, The Prodigal Son, Let's Play, this, their fourth episode, their final episode. But it feels like so much more, because we've also talked about Bono and The Edge in other people's music segments, like Sheena Easton. And other people, because they were involved in other bands and stuff. So yeah, it feels more like we've talked about them about eight times. So, I've already talked about Bono. I've already talked about The Edge. I've already even talked about Larry Mullen. So I guess let's talk about Adam Clayton, the bassist. He's been with YouTube. He was a co-creator of the band. So he's been around since the beginning. And part of 14 of their albums. So uh, he remained a bachelor for many decades. Including dating British supermodel Naomi Campbell in the 90s. Damn. Didn't get down or married until 2013. When he married human rights lawyer. Mariana Tashera Cara D. <laughs> Cara of- uh, keep going. She's Brazilian, <laughs> folks. I'm sure she's a. I'm sure she's gorgeous. My favorite part of the my two favorite things in music is always the previous band names and complicated names John's forced to say. <laughs> that, that's Adam Clayton. Otherwise, you know, pretty much just kind of involved with you two. Uh, let's see some other YouTube stuff. Let's see. Um, did you guys hear that Paul Henson said that this might be their last tour? Mm. You know Paul Henson. You know Paul Hens- H- Henson is right. Houston. Yeah, you know Paul. You know sometimes they call him Paul. Bono. Okay, so enough YouTube. I think it's time we put YouTube to bed. Let's talk about "Walking Toward Paradise" by Robert Plant. Robert Plant, obviously the lead singer of the probably the greatest band in rock and roll history, Led Zeppelin. And we talked about Robert Plant in "Junk Love," and we will be talking about him again in the episode "Freefall." 
<laughs> talk about good old Robert Plant and still leave us with a little bit of detail to talk about in free fall. Zeppelin, uh, aka the new yard birds as I know them. <laughs> he had various jobs while he was per- per- pursuing music, including laying tarmac on roads for a construction company. And I love this construction company's name. He worked for Wimpy Construction. <laughs> He also worked at Woolworths for a while. He also cut three very obscure singles for CBS Records. And that was when he got introduced to John Bonham. So he said numerous bands, uh, my favorite being the Crawling King Snakes. And then both him and Bonham would then join the Band of Joy from 66 to 68. Now, the Band of Joy would have a resurgence from 77 to 83. What happened in that time period? Well, around that same time period is when Led Zeppelin broke up. So, obviously, Robert Plant trying to go back to the Band of Joy. Well, and that's not actually the only thing that happened in his life in 1977. In 1977, his five, Robert Plant's five-year-old son died of a stomach virus rather suddenly mm. while he was on tour in the U.S. He was one of three of his kids with then-wife Maureen Wilson. It wrecked him. I mean, it crushed him. On tour at a concert in Cincinnati, he got one phone call about his k- kid being sick, and then the very next phone call was basically finding out that he had passed away. It would almost cause him to ban, like, Led Zeppelin to break up. It would lead him to the song All of My Love, one of my favorite songs of Led, Led Zeppelin's. And he would write a number of songs throughout his career about his son. So, but that was around the same time that he tried to bring back the band to joy. And ultimately, by 1980, Led Zeppelin would split. So after Led Zeppelin broke up in 80, he still occasionally collaborated with Jimmy Page. They would have a band much later in the future called Plant and Page, no, Page and Plant. But before that, like immediately after Led Zeppelin broke up, they actually collaborated and created a short-lived supergroup called the Honey Drippers. The Honey Drippers uh, released one album, uh, which featured hits of a remake of Phil Phillips' Sea of Love and a cover of Roy Brown's Rockin' at Midnight. But that's actually kind of, if you're a hardcore music nut, that's one of the things is to try and get the album, one of the Honey Drippers albums, because there are so Mm -hmm. few out there. And then he would go on to have a very successful solo career. And then I made the comment of... Led Zeppelin, you know, I know them as the New Yardbirds. And that's because when Jimmy Page, who was in the Yardbirds at the time, him and uh, I believe Peter Frampton were searching for a replacement lead singer. They originally came across the their first choice, Terry Reed. And Terry Reed would turn them down and he would point them toward Page, who at the time was playing with a band called Ob's Tweedle. <laughs> Go repeat that there. Playing with a band called Ob's Tweedle. <laughs> and he happened to be doing a show at a teacher's training school. And Beach would and Peter would go and, and watch him and, and then invite him to audition, in which Plant would sing the Jefferson Airplane song, Somebody to Love. That's how he got the gig. He would bring Bonham with them eventually, instead of being the new Yardbirds, they would become Led Zeppelin and be one of the most epic bands ever, including John Bonham being incredibly underappreciated as probably one of the greatest drummers. If you don't think he's one of the best drummers ever, go back and listen to When the Levee Breaks. Just tell me. There you go. Uh, A little bit more, Robert Plant. And just to cap off, the fantastic band names, you know, the Crawling King Snakes and Band of Joy and Ob's Tweedle. From 2002 to to the present, Robert Plant's new band, the Sensational Space Shifters, have released an album. Hopefully we get a second album from them. Every band, when they start, they will hope to be what Led Zeppelin and Pink Floyd can do now. That when you're in your 60s, you can announce, we're going to do three reunion shows in a single city and sell out 100,000 seat stadiums in 14 seconds. Oh, yeah. Be in your 60s. Be a band for 40, over 40 years, 50 years, and sell out a show in 14 seconds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There will never be anything like Led Zeppelin again. Like, really, I don't, or maybe not never, but man, it's going to be a long time. And the way pop culture is now, it's going to be really hard to to be something like that. Whereas 
when these bands were big, there was five TV channels. You got one rock radio station in your area. That's why everyone loved the same band. Because you, there was, how did you listen to anything else? In the world of streaming, when Spotify and YouTube and stuff re- recommend you new indie artists all the time, you're on the next flavor. Every month, there's some new flavor that has caught your attention. There's, It's going to be so hard for someone to be the, the Stones, the Beatles, or Led Zeppelin again. Well, let's go give our final thoughts on this episode. Um, I'm actually kind of interested to see where everyone's going to stand on this because we did point out some pothole stuff here, but there's still a strong episode buried in here. Let's go give our final thoughts. And that's going to do it for us this week on Go With The Heat. We hope you enjoyed this episode. We would love to hear from you. Email us, goWithTheHeat at gmail.com. Check out that website, goWithTheHeat.com. You can find all the other ways to contact us. We would love to hear from you. And we want to hear your take on this episode. We kind of cover the gamut from it was good to eh, to it's terrible. We kind of heard <laughs> all three uh. takes on this episode. We would love to hear from you. It's, Especially, we would love to hear from you on how many meatballs Frank bought with that million dollars <laughs> in those 134 kilos of coke that he's got right now. You can get us on Facebook, facebook.com slash go with the heat, twitter.com slash go with the heat, instagram.com slash go with the heat. Do you know where we're at? We're at go with the heat. We're your favorite and bestest Miami Vice podcast <laughs> on the internet. There is not another Miami Vice podcast better than this one on that you're listening to right now. <laughs> <laughs> we would love to hear from you. Check out that website, goWithTheHeat.com. We would also like to see your support. Support step number one. Go to that website. Click on the support link and find all the ways that you can support us. Support step number one. Go leave us a review. iTunes. And give us five stars. Go ahead. Just give us five stars. No, Apple will never know that I told you to give us five stars. That kind of frowned upon that kind of stuff, but they'll never know. Just go ahead and give it five stars. And then in your review, write about how wrong Gina got played in this episode. I got a problem with Rob Bar- Bragan and Michelle Manning. I'm looking at you two. You wrote and directed this episode. You did Gina wrong. Go write about how wrong Gina got in this episode in the iTunes review. Support step number two. Email us. Go with the gmail.com. Let us know what your thoughts are on this episode. Support step number three. Check out that Patreon. Patreon.com slash go with the heat. That's going to do it for us this week. We hope you enjoyed this episode. And we'll see you all next time. Bye, now.